love watching these big cats. They are mysterious, sleek, graceful hunters. While these guys may look and play like large house cats, make no mistake about it, they are apex predators. They once roamed these areas like kings. Now they're rarely seen in the wild here in Florida. But you're in luck. Here at the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary, we're about to take a closer look at these big kids. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kenneth. Once again, back here at Bush Wildlife with my buddy David, and um, you know, I've always been interested in the Panthers, man, and it's amazing to think that at one time, there were many of these animals in South Florida, in Florida, actually. We've seen a dramatic change in the populations of Florida. Um, I don't think that Florida Panthers were ever really numerous many, many years ago. I think what we have here is a small remnant population uh, that probably established themselves because of humans, because of the fact that we were pushing them out of some of their, their more historic territories in, in the northern areas. So these are actually, uh, I mean, talk to me a little bit about, uh, these are subspecies of Puma con color, is that it? Well, uh, you know, when you, when you take a look at these, and we're, we're calling these Florida Panthers, but most people will say, well, it looks like a cougar. Cougars, mountain lions, pumas, Florida Panthers are really all the same cat. There are several different subspecies that are found around the Americas. And the one which is found here in South Florida it is unique because it's the only cat that's found east of the Mississippi River. Really? Did it extend, as you said, into the Northern Territories? Like, would you find this cat in Pennsylvania, in, you know, Maine, in those areas, or no? There are occasional reports of cats that are up there. Um, these may be just, you know, uh, stray animals that have wandered. Uh, in some cases, they may be ones that were released. People had them in captivity and let them go. Wow. Uh, but the only stable population east of the Mississippi River is right here in South Florida. But these animals require a great deal of space to be successful, is that right? It is amazing when you think about it, but these cats, the males, have roaming range of up to 200 square miles. Wow. Now think about that for just a second. A single square mile is 640 acres, so you do the math. It's an incredible amount of land that these guys need in order for them to be able to survive. Now, they seem playful. I look at them, and it's similar to when you see, you know, we did a story on the bears a few months ago, and um, you know, you're, de you're deceived because they behave exactly like my cat Max at home. Man. It, 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 it <laughs> almost reminds you of a domestic cat, but when these cats were, you know, when they were playing, they were playing hard, and you can't put a human being into that situation because we can't tolerate the strength of these animals. Um, here in Florida, laws have changed. You can no longer have an animal like this as a, as a personal pet. Years ago, you could. In other parts of the country, people do have these cats as personal pets. And I can tell you, typically what happens, uh, you know, when they're small, they're easier to handle, but as they get older, people stop handling them, they put them in a cage, and then they can no longer go in there. Even if you are handling the animals on a regular basis, we are no match to their strength. This is an animal that has the agility to run after, tackle, and capture a white-tailed deer. You versus this animal, even in a playful situation, it is a life-threatening life situation. Yeah, you'll come up short every time. Now, the other thing I really want to talk about, I know you're excited, we're actually standing in the new panther habitat, and this was a, a really monumental thing for the sanctuary. I mean, this, this was a big undertaking. It, 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 it was. First of all, you need to understand what Bush Wildlife Sanctuary does. Primarily, we are a injured wildlife care facility. We take care of sick, injured, and orphaned wild animals. Our main goal is to fix whatever's wrong with the animals and then release them back out to the wild whenever possible. But 90% of the animals that we get in have been injured in one way or another by people. So education is so important to prevent animals from getting injured. So having these animals in captivity give us the opportunity to teach people. But we, as, as caretakers of captive wildlife, we have a responsibility to provide for them. 
and they do need a lot of room to run around and to be able to play and they do need the ability to have different types of enrichment so they're not just living a boring life. Mm -hmm. So this was a very monumental uh, project for us because we wanted to create a facility that would give them the opportunity to really be able to get out and, and live a true healthy life in captivity. Uh, it also gives us the opportunity to have a good secure building so that if we end up dealing with a hurricane or a storm or something like that, these animals will always be secure and we won't have to worry about them. Can you take us through a couple of things that might be uh, worth checking out? Absolutely. One of the things that you'll take a look at, you'll notice that the whole perimeter of the enclosure has um, a, a four foot, 45 degree angle inward in incline. Um, and this is something that the state of Florida requires. If you're gonna have an enclosure which is uh, over a thousand square feet, they allow you to have open air for, for animals like cougars. But I will tell you, a cougar can climb. So the overhang gives, gives the ability to prevent them from actually being able to, to get out. We have a 10 foot straight wall uh, on the side and the fence is actually buried into the ground uh, two and a half feet and then it's sunk in concrete. Uh, wow. These cats typically don't dig a lot but occasionally they will and, and it, you don't want them being able to compromise the, the perimeter of the enclosure. It's always itself. better to overbuild in this safe, right. uh, sense. Um, now, you know, I hear stories about panthers, cougars, that they are some of the most acrobatic cats out there. Is it true? Like, I mean, a 10 foot fence is daunting to us, but to them, if they really wanted, without that incline, they could easily cruise over it. Um, Cougars have one of the greatest leaping abilities of almost any other species of cat. They can leap some of the greatest distances. Their main diet in the wild is white-tailed deer, so they have to have that ability to be able to do that. So in a captive situation, you have to think about that. They have the ability to be able to, to jump, and they can climb up trees. What's being done right now as far as conservation for the Florida panther, and how do they stand right now in the wild? We know some of the research studies that the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service have really helped greatly in increasing the populations uh, of, of the Florida panthers. Uh, we've gone from you know some 20 or so animals in the 80s to you know here it is 2014, and there's probably well over uh, 100 Florida panthers that are out there. Uh, some of the things that were done was was studying their their movements. Um, in the earlier years, the number one cause of injury to Florida Panthers was them being hit by cars. Wow. So we rebuilt the old alligator alley into I-75. One of the things that they did is they put in wildlife underpasses. These are basically are bridges for you and I, but areas that allow animals like Florida Panthers to pass safely underneath our roads. How did we know where to put those? Through studying the movements of the Florida Panthers with those radio tracking devices, we discovered that they had their own intersections across our highways. So by putting these wildlife underpasses in that unknown intersection that we couldn't see actually reduced the numbers of, of, of collisions with, with the Florida panthers by automobiles and eliminated that as being the number one cause of death to this animal. That's amazing. So these animals actually have, you know, the whole ecosystem mapped out in their brain. They, they have do. a roadway for themselves, and that's why you know habitat fragmentation between panthers, even turtles, tortoises, some of the other animals, really can disturb that natural flow. Absolutely, and one of the other things that's been very, very important, and this has been a, a big challenge, and that is connecting known Florida panther habitats with other areas that can sustain Florida panthers that don't have Florida panther populations. So creating these corridors or greenways, greenways yeah. that allow these animals to be able to move out of their known territories now into other places that can support their populations. I'm blown away by David's knowledge of these animals and believe it or not there was much more to see at this panther exhibit. So if you'd like to check it out be sure to go to the Camp Kennan channel on YouTube, become a subscriber and take a look at the bonus section for part two of this story. Thanks for watching. So cool.